success. This is what people are asking for today. Health, wealth, prosperity, success, and worldly things. That's what they ask for in churches today. The Bible says we should ask for these things right here. Yeah, oh, yes. That's right. Very, very, very true. Coming from Mr. The Wise One himself. We've got to have wisdom. Not intelligence. God didn't say common sense. He said wisdom. Oh, my word. I'm going to get sick. There's a book called The Secret. In this book called The Secret, and it espouses the pantheistic view of a spiritual Ponzi scheme. Praying on your desires, on your worldly desires, to get what you want through God. It is called the Word Faith Movement, the Prosperity Gospel, the Name It and Claim It Gospel. It has been advocated and perpetuated by people like this. You ready for this? Benny Hinn, Marilyn Hickey, Fred Price, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, Robert Tilton, Oral Roberts, Paul Crouch. These people, oh, and the big one, the big one's coming. What's the big one? Oh, the big one's coming. This is the, the, the number one pastor of America has not mentioned this, and he's the greatest advocator of it. And we're not talking about Billy Graham. I hope not. Joe Olsen, listen to this. They all claim the same thing as a Christian. You have the personal power to recreate your own reality in your life through God. And you could do it in Jesus' name. That is a lie. It is a blasphemous lie. It preys on the weak and the desperate people who have fallen, corrupt, and regenerate normal human desires. They believe that it's called the gay Christian movement. The gay Christian movement has been advocated for a long time saying you can keep your sin and still be loved by God. It is not going to happen. If you stay gay in your mind and you're saved, you're not saved. You can fool your church, you can fool your family, but you will not fool God, you will not fool Jesus. You need to repent of your sin and leave that sin right now. You need to get on your hands and knees and pray for the blood of Jesus to wash you clean and to take away that ugly demonic desire and give you a godly love and be broken and be sacrificed and to receive the Spirit of God to change your life. That's what you need. Amen. A few weeks ago, there was an event here in Dodger Stadium with Joel Seen. 35,000 people attended. <laughs> I am using the word loosely that he is the pastor of America's Church down in Houston. I was born in Houston. I'm ashamed of that for him. I love Houston. Go, go Astro. Listen. <laughs> you need to understand that this is that he is a pagan religionist. Repeat that, please, one more time. He's a pagan religionist in every sense of the word. He's a quasi pantheist. He believes that God's power is at your disposal, that you are the maker of your destiny. Crazy? Wow. <laughs> Here's some quotes to, to give you this. You ready for this? All of us are born with earthly for earthly greatness. All of us are born for earthly greatness. You were born to win. Let me repeat that again. What? All of us are born for earthly greatness. You were born to win. Win what? You were born to be a champion. Champion of what? Before you were formed, he prepared us to live abundant, happy, healthy, and whole lives. When our thinking becomes contaminated, it knows it's no longer in line with God's word. Oh, listen to what he said. And I highlighted this one. I like this one. This is not a little man picking on a bit, uh, picking on Joel Stein, okay? This is a man exposing truth. He said this, God's word is not the Bible. That's what he said. Let me repeat that again. God's word is not the the Bible. I swear that I believe that this is the Bible, that this, this book is, is true, the precious, 
And he holds this it up all the time. Yeah, this is my Bible. Yeah, this is my Bible. I'm what it says I am. And this is who it says I am, and I and yeah, all blah, 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 blah. and all this, yeah. and this is what he does with it. Mm. That's what he does with it. But then he says that God there's more. God more hints are coming. He said, he says God's word is not the Bible. God's word is that word that comes to us. Listen to this. It comes to us mystically. 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 I don't think so. He's We had someone that came to this church and they texted me that they were going to Joel Osteen's church. Here's another quote. Get your positive thinking and he will bring your desires to pass. <laughs> he regards you as a strong, courageous, and successful person. You are on your new level of glory. All you have to do is visualize it and speak it. Your word has power and your word gives life to dreams. Think so. Here's another quote. Forget God's word. It doesn't matter. Your word counts, not God's word. Here's another quote. Friend, there's a miracle in your mouth. But then why did Isaiah say, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among the people of unclean lips? Why did Isaiah say that? Mm -hmm. And here's your old scenes prayer. You ready for this one? I thank you, Father, that I have your favor. Wow. He must have met the Pharisees in Luke 18. I thank you that I'm not like other people that do not have the favor you gave me. I'm successful because I'm worthy of your success. I know these people, here's another quote, I know these principles, are, you know why they work? Because they work for me and my wife. So it is the truth. As long as it works for him and his wife, it's okay. So it should work for you. Forget that you're different. Forget that God. Forget that God has a will and purpose for you and only you. Forget that. If these work for Him, they will work for you. And if they don't work for you, because you're not Him, okay? These only work for Him. That's why He's the pastor, and we're not, because He's the only one that has these principles, and He's the only one that can be successful. Let me let me help you decide this in very vivid terms. Do not go to his church. Do not send money. He's coming to San Antonio. Oh, we'll be. I can't wait. I won't be there. Do not, do not support this lie. His church, that group is built on a house of cards and it's going to fall. It reminds me of Babylon in Genesis 11 when they're trying to build the Tower of Babylon. It was made of bricks, all bricks, the same congruent, all uniform, all in the same line, in the same order. But here was the trick. What held those bricks together? It was something called a subline. You know what that was? It was the gooey residue that came from the earth that resulted from the pressure from the bottom, from, from the middle of the earth. It was a gooey substance, it was sticky, it was yucky. And it was used to build the Tower of Babel. Okay? It wasn't mortar that bricklayers do today that they get the mortar and everything's set. No, they used this sticky black substance that was horrific smelling and it was like a glue. And they stuck it all together. But here's the, here's the problem. Who do you think stopped that tower from being built? God. Who do you think destroyed that tower? God. Who do you think changed the people's language? God. God will not let man attain the things of heaven in his own hands. In other words, the Tower of Babel was a disaster because it was made in the hands of man. And that subline tar residue that held the bricks together eventually fell. If a church is built on lies, if it's built on heresy, it will fall. If a church is built on anything of this world and not of God, it will fall. I don't care if you have 30,000 people or 40,000 people that go to church. I don't care if you have the biggest Sunday school. I don't care if you have the biggest treasury fund or the, the biggest singles club or whatever. It is going to fall if it's built on lies. And that is built on lies. That is not going to stand. It will fall. And here's the thing that's sad. And this is sad. The people that eventually will leave that church is going to go to another church to find the same thing. 
they're going to leave that church and they're going to say, we need to find another one just like this one. Church aside, let's just focus on me and you. Let's we bow our heads. This is a me and you moment. Okay? I'm like you. I'm a human being. I have my frailties. I have my falls. I'm a, I'm a sinner like you. No one's special. My passion sometimes gets the best of me and I want things to happen quicker than God expects them to be. That's on me. But this is just me. Away from all the TVs and the the lights. Get away. If you want to get away from your family, get away from your family for a moment. Friends, go to the bathroom if you have to. Go to the garage. Go some, Go in your car. Have this moment between you and God. Get away where it's just you and God. Pray this prayer. I want you to pray. Ask the Lord for His direction. Ask the Lord, Lord, you show me your truth. You tell me what is true. You reveal to me what is right. You tell me what I should do. Take over my life. People are telling me I should be married and have kids. I should have this job. I should do this. Lord, I don't. Get them out of my mind and my head right now. Okay? You tell me. You tell me, Lord. I'm asking you. If I want to get married, I want to get married once and for all. No more divorces. I want to do it your way. And it won't be right unless you do it. Lord, I want to have the right job, but I want you to give it to me. I want to follow you. What is what you want me to have? Because what you want me to have is better than anyone else could ever have for me. Lord, I'm scared. There's some things in my life that I'm scared. Help me to conquer these fears. Give me peace. You say, let not your heart be troubled, Lord. Help me to feel that. This world is going to hell, and this world, all I hear is bad things. Lord, tell me what is true. What is going to happen? I don't care what happens to this world. What's going to happen to me? Help me, Lord. Lord, I'm a sinner. I made choices in my life that have brought embarrassment and shame, hurt. Or, I have not made those choices because I'm scared to make them. I don't want to fail. Lord, I, I don't pray for to be rich or to be healthy. I just want to be loved by you. I want you to come into my life and make it your life. I want you to protect my life and bless it by your favor. And Lord, whatever you will is for my life, I accept it. I want you. If you want me to go through the fire, Lord, I know you'll be with me. If I have to go through tough times, I know you will be with me. You didn't promise me a, 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 a stress-free life. You promised me a life with you no matter what lies ahead. Lord, forgive me for my sins. I blame myself. I am a sinner. I don't blame anyone else. I don't blame society. I don't make excuses. I am a sinner. And Lord, I need you to forgive my, me and my sins. I need your blood to wash and make me clean. Nothing else will. And Lord, I will submit to you. I will follow you and do what you say. Wherever you will lead me, I will go. Whatever you tell me, I will do. Whatever truth is, I will believe you because you are the truth. And Lord, this is just between me and you and no one else. My salvation is not dependent on anyone but you and you alone. I answer to you only. Amen. See, if you believe that prayer, and you sincerely believe it, you are a changed person from this day forward. You're going to have a new attitude. You're going to have a new belief. You're going to be a new person. And you're going to scare people. 
Your friends are not going to know who you are. Your family may say, who the heck? What in the heck is happening to you, girl? <laughs> but know this. The only one that counts is Jesus. And that's the only one that should count. Because like it says, without God, we have nothing. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be to hear your word. Lord, we do not call people out for the sake of aggrandizement or popularity. We call truth truth and lies lies. People bring it upon themselves what they do. They are responsible for their own actions. So the people that were named are responsible for their actions. I am not. They have to answer to you. Lord, the whole purpose of this is to bring you honor and glory and to tell what the truth really is. Because you are the way and the truth and the life. And we would be remiss in doing our service if we did not do that. We are your church. We don't belong to any convention, committee, or pope. We belong to you. You died on the cross for our sins. We listen to your word despite what other preachers say. Your word is not your word. We believe your word is your word. And by thy word, thy word shall sustain forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away, it says in your word. It is your word that binds us, blesses us, and it builds us in Jesus' name. Lord, there are pastors that should not be pastors on purpose. Lord, get rid of those people now in Jesus' name. They are doing more harm than service. They are leading millions away away from you, which is sin in itself. Lead them to the truth. Lead them to the people that are speaking the truth. It doesn't have to be a big palatial 400,000 plus building, Lord. It could be under your tree for all we know. But as long as there's truth there, that's what matters the most. Because you're the way and the truth and the life. If you bring them here, Lord, we will gladly receive them. If there's no room, you will make room. We're not going to sweat the small stuff. But the most important thing, Lord, is to bring the truth to the people before you come back. Because you are coming back. We are trying to bring as many souls to Jesus as we possibly can. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.